O oh God, my God, illumine the brows of thy true lovers and support them with angelic hosts of certain triumph. Set firm their feet on thy straight path and out of thine ancient bounty open before them the portals of thy blessings. For they are expending on thy pathway what thou hast bestowed upon them, safeguarding thy faith, putting their trust in their remembrance of thee, offering up their hearts for love of thee, and withholding not what they possess in adoration for thy beauty, and in their search for ways to please thee. O my Lord, ordain for them a plenteous share, a distant recompense, and sure reward. Verily, thou art the sustainer, the helper, the generous, the bountiful, the ever-bestowing. Beloved friends, it is indeed heartwarming to see so many of us uh, preparing ourselves to pay Hawagullah. The first part is to deal with the spiritual application and spiritual significance of this law. Baha'u'llah refers to it in these words, the institution of Hurok is sacred. <clears throat> the question of Hurok is highly significant. Hurok'ullah is indeed a great law. Now these extracts are all taken from this compilation, which the National Assembly of the United Kingdom has already published, and I think we can buy copies from the book center. <clears throat> And we do hope that other national assemblies would be <coughs> printing this compilation. In addition to this compilation, the House of Justice has released a, an abbreviated and abridged form of this compilation. None of the national assemblies has, have yet published that abridged form. And also uh, a codification of that law. All these have been sent to national assemblies so that the friends will uh, be educated and deepened in the understanding of this law in anticipation of its universal application. Now, when we study uh, the <coughs> laws of other religions, we see that in every religion there is, there is an injunction to offer contributions and arms, <clears throat> uh, that this, such offerings should be uh, done willingly and according to one's ability and as a token of gratitude to God. For example, in, um, in the Old Testament we have, honor the Lord with thy substance. Also, uh, with reference to tithes, which have been fixed as one-tenth of one's wealth. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. Uh, in, the Quran, in, in Islam as well, there is reference to what is known as khums, which is one-fifth of one's wealth. And also zakat, which is a very complicated way of calculating one's income from the land. <clears throat> in the Bayan, there is reference to, for the first time, the word Hurugullah has been used by the Bab in the Bayan. But the format and the content is different from what Baha'u'llah has given us. Uh, Hurugullah has been translated by Shoghi Effendi as the right of God, but uh, the literal word, this word hukuk, is the, as those of you who come from Persian background know very well, is the plural of haq. So it is really the rights of God, which Shoghi Effendi has translated as the right of God, which of course means the rights of God. 
uh, in questions and answers, Baha'u'llah acknowledges the fact, as you know, questions and answers is an annex to the Kitab al-Aqdas. He, uh, he acknowledges the fact that this law of Baha'u'llah has derived from <coughs> the Bayan. Um, now, just a few words about the way Baha'u'llah did things with respect to his laws. As you know, <coughs> He says, and, and the, the introduction to the codification of the Kitab al-Aqdas makes this very clear, that it took him 20 years out of 39 of, his, of the period of his mission to finally reveal his book of laws. 20 years. His the birth of the revelation was in 1853, and the Book of Laws, the Kitab al Aqdas, was revealed in 1873. And now, after having revealed the book, he did not want to send it to the friends. He kept it for some time. We don't know exactly how long, but it could very well be about one year. And then he sent it to Iran, where the majority of his followers, of course, resided. But then he said nothing about Hawullah. How? Because there is a reference in the Kitab al-Aqdas, which we shall read together uh, this evening. <clears throat> but he did not appoint anybody to receive the Hawullah. He made no arrangements for the receipt of this offering and kept silent for five years after the revelation of the book. So it was finally in 1878 that he said, now we are authorizing the receipt of Hawula. So Hawula was postponed it's uh, from the time of the birth of the revelation for 25 years. Um, it was at the same time that Baha'u'llah revealed the obligatory prayers. So he must have sensed a condition of stability and relative maturity in the community in Iran to be able to be the recipients of such divine commandments. And he makes it clear that at the time when he <coughs> made it uh, binding upon the friends or applicable uh, to the friends, he made it clear that it was because of the general needs of the cause. The faith had expanded the conditions and circumstances were such to make it necessary for him to, um, to make, uh, for the friends to make such payments. So you see that only during the last 14 years of his mission did he uh, write more specifically about the hukuk, answered the questions of the friends on this important law, and began the operation of this important fund. Now, uh, on the question of the needs of the cause, uh, Baha'u'llah makes in this book, uh, in this compilation, many references to the importance of material means for the growth of the faith. For example, the progress and promotion of the cause of God depend on material means. Or, this measure hath been ordained in view of the necessity of material means. Again, in order to arrange some essential matters, permission was granted to accept such payments. Yet again, it is essential for certain people to receive aid, and others need attention and care. But all this must take place by the leave of God. He permitted 
the receipt of Hukuk, but the disbursement, the payment of Hukuk, had to be referred to him. There are at present many individuals diligently engaged in the service of the cause in various regions who are unable to earn their living. And yet again, it is permissible to pay to the poor out of the right of God. This is conditional upon permission having been granted. If permission were to be given universally, it would lead to strife and give rise to trouble. So you see, he was coordinating this fund. It was the right of God. And there was a need for a central authority. He appointed a chief trustee in Iran and permitted him to appoint sub-trustees, deputy trustees, in other parts and regions of the country, all coordinated by him. Now, the order of succession, as explained in the Kitab Aqdas, is something that should be briefly referred to here in connection with Hukukullah. Uh, in the Kitab Aqdas, <coughs> on this, when dealing with the subject of endowments, uh, Baha'u'llah gives this order of succession. The manifestation of God, after him, the branches, plural, the branches. After them, the house of justice. That's how it's been laid in that portion of the Kitab Ardas, <coughs> which deals with endowments. Uh, Baha'u'llah passed away. There was ne no reference in his will and testament to Hukukullah. Who's going to be the recipient of Hukukullah? So the friends asked uh, Abdul Baha about it. He said, he used a word. <coughs> uh, those of you from Persian background are familiar with it. It is marja. It means and of the authority in the cause to whom all must turn, the marja. So he said, in other words, he was after Baha'u'llah, the marja, the authority in the cause to whom all must turn. He said, Baha'u'llah goes to that authority. So in his will and testament, he made it very clear that the Baha'u'llah reverts to the guardian and should be paid, as Shoghi Effendi has translated in the will and testament, through Shoghi Effendi. Now, if Shoghi Effendi had direct successes as heads of the faith, they would be the recipients of Hukukullah. It would be, again, through them. Now, in the event, with the passing of Shoghi Effendi, the headship, as we all know, after the period of the interregnum of the hands of the cause of God, the, suc the, the succession passed as head of the faith to the Universal House of Justice. And therefore, this formula that Abdul Baha had given about marja, about the authority in the cause to which all must turn. According to this statement, the House of Justice felt uh, and announced to the friends that uh, in these circumstances, uh, it could receive law and payments could be made through it for the purposes laid down in the writings. Baha'u'llah himself, <coughs> commenting about Baha'u'llah in his own days, has written there is a prescribed ruling for the Hukukullah. After the House of Justice has come into being, the law thereof will be made manifest in conformity with the will of God. So, as I told you, 25 years have now passed 
since the formation, nearly 25, since the, since the formation of the House of Justice. And now the first thing we get from this House of Justice is that it has included in the goal, one, as one of the goals of the six year plan, uh, the question of educating ourselves in this law in anticipation of the day when it will become universally binding. Now, there is <coughs> an explanation uh, in connection with Hukuk Allah that I would like to read to you. Uh, it's in two, two passages I would like to read. One is from the Kitab -e Aqdas that I told you we'll have to read. And the other is a tablet from Abdul Baha. I will only read parts of it. Now, let's see how Baha'u'llah refers to this law for the first time in the Kitab -e Aqdas and then waits for five years before he expounds on it. This is all, the, all that the friends had for five years, less than five years, because as I said, for some time the Kitab -e Aqdas had not been sent out from here. Should a person acquire 100 misqals of gold, 19 misqals thereof belong unto God, <coughs> sorry, the creator of earth and heaven. Take heed, O people, lest ye deprive yourselves of this great bounty. We have prescribed this law unto you while we are wholly independent of you and of all that are in the heavens and on the earth. Indeed, there lie concealed in this command mysteries and benefits which are beyond the comprehension of anyone save God, the all-knowing, the all-informed. Say, through this injunction, God desireth to purify your possessions and enable you to draw nigh unto such stations as none can attain, except those whom God may please. Verily, he is the generous, the gracious, the bountiful. O people, and now I want you uh, to think of the tremendous implications of the few sentences that follow. O people, act not treacherously in the matter of Hukukullah and dispose not of it except by his leave. This in effect means that the 19% does not belong to us. And if we use the 19% without his permission, we are acting treacherously. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. It is the right of God. Thus hath it been ordained in his epistles as well as in this glorious tablet. Whoso dealeth, now this is a warning, whoso dealeth dishonestly with God, is referring to Hawala. In other words, if we spend that 19% in the way we want, we are dealing dishonestly with God. And if we do that, whoso dealeth dishonestly with God will, in justice, be exposed. The justice of God demands that that person be exposed. And whoso, and now the positive side, and whoso fulfilleth the things he hath been commanded, divine blessings will descend upon him from the heaven of the bounty of his Lord. The bestower, the bountiful, the most generous. Now, as to the tablet of Abdul Baha, it's quite a long tablet. And in the section here in this book, it is the very first tablet or passage 
uh, under the section Extracts from the Writings of Abdul Baha. It's a rather long tablet. I won't read it all, but I'll read you about five or six excerpts from it. <clears throat> the temple, now he's giving us what we could describe as the philosophy of this institution and its spiritual significance. The temple of the world hath been fashioned after the image and likeness of the human body. The structure of the physical world is like unto a single being whose limbs and members are inseparably linked together. Cooperation, mutual aid and reciprocity are essential characteristics in the unified body of the world of being. <clears throat> Inasmuch as all created things are closely related together. And now, this point. The higher a kingdom of created things is on the arc of ascent, the more conspicuous are the signs and evidences of the truth that cooperation and reciprocity at the level of a higher order are greater than those that exist at the level of a lower order. For example, the evident signs of this fundamental reality are more discernible in the vegetable kingdom than in the mineral, and still more manifest in the animal world than in the vegetable world. Acts of cooperation, mutual assistance, and reciprocity are not confined to the body and to things that pertain to the material world, but for all conditions, whether physical or spiritual. The more this interrelationship is strengthened and expanded, the more will human society advance in progress and prosperity. This, he concludes, is the basic principle on which the institution of Hukuk Allah is established. In other words, it is there established by Baha'u'llah in order to promote mutual reciprocity, collaboration, and cooperation between the different parts and members of human society. This is, Abdul Baha says, is the concept that Baha'u'llah had when he revealed this law. Now, if this is a long tablet, I cannot read it all. But you will study it, I am sure, when, the th when you have the time to do so. Now, how should Huwawullah be given? He forbids in, this, in these passages here, over and over again, the trustee of the Hurugullah. He forbids him, in no uncertain terms, from demanding this offering, soliciting the friends to pay. He says, appeals, that's permissible. But the appeals should be general to the body of the friends. There should be no coercion, no pressure placed on them. He calls on his trustee and other trustees to always uphold the dignity of the cause, the honor of the cause, at all costs. How to make the offering? There is a whole list of qualities attitudes that he wants to see in the hearts and minds of the friends. Here is a list. Joy, radiance, 
in a spirit of perfect humility, in a spirit of lowliness, with contentment for the sake of God. The amount is unimportant, even if it is a single grain. In other words, if you have five grains, you pay, you give Baha'u'llah just one grain. He accepts that and it's precious for him. With gladness, with willing acquiescence, offering should be spontaneous. With willingness, with willing submission. Whenever it is possible to do so, with eagerness, it's a matter of conscience. It's a spiritual obligation, a conscientious obligation. Okay, these are just little words that I have picked from this compilation which describe the attitude how, he says, the offering should be made. He even goes so far as telling his trustees, he says, if it is not like, like this, don't accept it. He goes that far. And it's not acceptable in the eyes of God. Okay, now, some of the benefits. He says over and over again, the benefits revert to the donors themselves. It's a source of grace, abundance, and of all good. It's a bounty which shall remain with every soul in every world of the worlds of God. Well is it with him who ascendeth unto God without any obligation to Hawu'u'llah and to his servants, no debts whatsoever, neither to man nor to God. But he puts God first. Payment is a source of blessings and the mainspring of God's loving kindness and tender love vouchsafed unto men. The goodly results and the fruits thereof will last as long as the kingdom of earth and heaven will endure. It is a means for the purging, the purification, and sanctification of the souls of men, and is a source of prosperity and blessing. It will be conducive to divine increase and to salvation. By observing it, one is raised to honor. It serves to purify one's possessions. It will be conducive to added prosperity. It's a unique test to distinguish friend from stranger. It will enable the donors to become firm and steadfast. It will draw divine increase upon the donors. And finally, it is conducive to dignity and honor. These are all extracts from this compilation. Merely arranged.